What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today's video has got to be one of, if not the most insane combat story I have ever shared here on the channel. This story is all about former Green Beret and CIA contractor Tony Cowden. And I'm pulling all of the information for this story from the Sean Ryan Show with... Tony Cowden. I'll have it linked down in the description below for you guys to check out that specific episode, and I definitely recommend it. Tony Cowden shares a lot more really intense combat stories in that full interview than what I'm going to be sharing here today and a lot more detail over there. So if you like this video, you definitely need to watch that episode of the Sean Ryan show. It is phenomenal. I also believe that the Sean Ryan show YouTube channel is about to hit 2 million subscribers, which is a crazy milestone. So if you haven't already, definitely go over there and hit that subscribe button and help them reach that 2 million subscriber mark. That is an incredible accomplishment. And in my opinion, they are the best podcast available right now. So if you've never checked out the Sean Ryan show, definitely get over there. You are seriously missing out. With all that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy it. Let's go ahead and jump into this incredible story. June 2011, Tony Cowden was working as a CIA contractor in Iraq. He was on a low profile vehicle surveillance mission with one of his teammates. They were in plain clothes in a civilian looking vehicle, just doing a little bit of surveillance in the area. But as they were exiting the neighborhood they were doing surveillance in, they were spotted by an enemy scout who very quickly pulled out a cell phone to report their location and call for backup. Realizing that they had been compromised, Tony and his teammate quickly made a call back to base to inform them that they had been compromised and were heading back to base immediately. But before they could clear the area, an enemy fighter with an RPG ran out into the middle of the street in front of their vehicle and fired a rocket straight into the hood of their vehicle. The impact from the crash slammed Tony's face into the steering wheel, leaving him dazed and barely conscious. But his teammate was quickly able to grab him and kind of shake him awake to get him back into the fight. The two operators then quickly decided that they needed to get out of the vehicle and try to make a break for it back to base on foot. So Tony grabbed his rifle and exited the vehicle. But as soon as he got out of the vehicle, multiple enemy fighters came out of a nearby alleyway and opened fire on their vehicle. But Tony very quickly returned fire, and I don't think the enemy expected him to be armed because after firing just a few shots at the enemy, they quickly backed off back into the alleyway they came from. With the enemy now temporarily dealt with, Tony realized that his teammate never exited the vehicle. So he ran to the passenger side door to check on him. But unfortunately, his teammate had been hit in the chest by an AK round before he was able to exit the vehicle, and he unfortunately passed away from his wounds. But Tony wasn't just going to leave his friend behind, so he grabbed him out of the car and started to carry him off the street. But he got his foot caught on the muffler of the vehicle and tripped and fell to the ground. And before he was able to get back on his feet, the enemies came back out of the alleyway and began shooting at him again. So while laying on the street, he returned fire on the enemy, pushing them back into the alley once again with suppressive fire, giving him just enough time to get back on his feet and drag his teammate off of the street and onto the sidewalk. Tony's game plan was to drag his teammate into a nearby shop on the side of the road where he would then take cover and call for backup. But before he was able to get inside the store, the enemy popped back out of the alleyway and began shooting at them again. At this point, Tony was real sick of the enemy showing its head and then going back behind cover over and over again. So he grabbed his teammate's M249 saw and dumped an entire drum mag into the enemy, eliminating several enemy fighters and sending the rest running for their lives. Tony is then able to grab his teammate and start dragging him once again towards the nearby shop. And at this point, Tony is really starting to wonder why his backup hasn't arrived yet because he's been calling for help on his radio this whole time. The cluster of buildings that he is surrounded by must be interfering with his radio and he's just not able to get a good enough signal to call in for backup. 
so he quickly drags his teammate into the store where the shopkeeper offers to help him, but Tony tells the shopkeeper to just get as far away from here as he possibly can. He then takes all the ammo he can off of his teammate and rolls his teammate up in a rug and then hides him under the stairwell to ensure the enemy wouldn't take his body. He then placed a tripwire mine in the doorway of the shop and then makes his way out the back door and heads into a nearby two-story building and works his way up to the rooftop to try and see if he can get a better signal on the radio to call for backup from on the roof. But once he gets up there, he realizes his radio isn't working at all because it was hit by an AK round completely disabling it. Now he has no way to call for backup and he's on the top of a two-story building in a very exposed position with enemy fighters all around looking for him. He knows he needs to get off of this rooftop and back on the ground as quickly as possible. So he has the idea to jump from the two-story rooftop to a nearby one-story rooftop but he doesn't quite make the jump and falls two stories down to the ground. And to make things worse, before he's able to get back on his feet from the fall, an enemy fighter rounds the corner into the alleyway he just landed in and looks seemingly right at him. But miraculously, despite being directly in front of this man's line of sight, the enemy fighter somehow doesn't see Tony standing right there in front of him. The fighter just simply keeps on running down to the next alleyway. But Tony must have used up all of his luck on that one situation because as soon as he's back on his feet, another enemy fighter comes around the corner. And this one definitely sees him. But thankfully, Tony's able to quickly eliminate the enemy fighter. However, unfortunately, the sound of his gunshots brings that first fighter sprinting back to the alley. He's in such a dead sprint that he rounds the corner and just about runs straight into Tony but Tony's able to drop him very quickly with just two rounds. At this point, Tony is realizing that he's in a very bad position. He's got a limited amount of ammunition, he's all alone, and he has no way to let anyone else know where he is or even that he needs help. So he comes up with a plan to make his way down to a nearby river and then just let the river take him downstream away from the enemy's location where he can then just walk his way back to base. So he grabs all of his gear and begins to make his way down to the river. But thankfully, just before he gets to the river, he is spotted by a friendly helicopter flying overhead. His teammates back at base knew something was wrong when Tony went radio silent. So they started looking for him. The helicopter hovered over Tony and started unloading its 50 cal machine gun as well as its rockets on the enemies still pursuing Tony. Once the enemies were cleared out, an Apache gunship and a striker infantry carrier vehicle full of rangers showed up to rescue Tony. By the end of the two hour long gunfight, Tony had only nine 9mm rounds left in his pistol and 14 5.56 rounds left in his rifle. He had used 5 frag grenades and 2 tripwire mines and single handedly eliminated 26 enemy fighters. Which is absolutely mind blowing. That is some straight up John Wick stuff. You only hear about that or see that in movies. That is wild and I cannot even begin to understand how he managed to pull that off. He said in the interview with Sean Ryan that he had basically come to terms with the fact that he was not going to make it out of this situation and he just wanted to make sure he took as many enemy fighters down with him as possible. But thankfully, his teammates got there just in time and he was rescued from that insane situation. And that's the end of the story, guys. Like I said, definitely go check out the Sean Ryan show. It's episode number 72. Like I said, I'll have it linked down in the description below. I genuinely had like a hard time picking what story I wanted to share because that podcast just had so many really cool freaking stories from Tony Cowden. He had an insane career in the Green Berets as well as working as a CIA contractor. It's a really cool podcast and definitely one that I recommend checking out if you haven't already. But anyway, guys, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. Thanks so much for checking this video out and I will see you guys in the next one.